like the mage is a great example too we're coming out with this new boat in january that you know it's yeah it's it's such a phenomenal product and people are stoked on it because we've like teased it and there's certain people that have you have one um i think i've, I've already sold at least 10 <laughs> yeah. um you know this guy in new zealand's been talking about it and he's put some videos out and man it's really cool to hear this the hype and the stoke on this boat um i've been paddling one all year so it's been really cool to see it come together we had the concept done you know a long time ago the concept was like right, steve had one last winter yeah that you guys loaned him yeah so the concept was done we knew what the bow was. We even knew like the shape and the size, but all the fine tuning that came with it was another eight months of work. Can I bring up something that he had said? Because he had taken a, a version of one on the Grand Canyon, I think. And he said when it was full, it was like awesome. But then when this particular version of it was empty, it was like impossible to paddle. Like, how does that happen? <laughs> well, that's the funny thing. His grand trip was a week after my grand trip and we brought the same boats so we figured this boat the concept's great let's make a few of these boats let's get them on a couple of grand trips and the grand on a self-support grand trip you're carrying quite a bit of gear upwards of 100 pounds at the start and so the boat handles so much differently when you have 100 pounds of gear in it as compared to having 30 pounds of gear at the end of a trip as compared to running some laps at 205 rapid with no gear in the boats because it's easier to carry up to the top. And we found the same thing. It was just that boat with weight in it was phenomenal. It was, we all thought the project was done already. It was just like that good. We were just like so stoked. We we're like, this boat's awesome. Like there's no changes. We don't need to do anything with this boat. And then we took all the weight out and go run a few laps on 205 rapid and not one person made it down the rapid upright oh my god and so it's just wow. like but yeah. then how do you figure out a solution to that like do you i guess do you because you know the boat so well know what could possibly cause that yeah i mean yeah exactly that's yeah a lot of it had to do with the stability primary versus secondary stability sit height paddler position you know, there's so many factors. And so the boat, the original boat that we made is a far cry from what it is today. Huh. It, wow. It's gone through, uh, I mean, major, major overall. By the way, I always have my seat only half inflated. Yeah. No, well, I mean, like, <laughs> I, just, I never thought about telling you that until right now. Oh. No, yeah, but, exactly. which is good. You're, that. that's great because you're right in the zone. Mm -hmm. Jeff Kramer who's maybe a slightly smaller person than I am, you know, maybe by like five or 10 pounds. I mean, he paddles it with no seat inflation and then I paddle with comp with full seat inflation. Really? Yeah. So we try to set it up. So th that seat is right there in the middle for that will cover 75 to 90, 95% of the people. Oh, because the size of the person and the weight of the person. So it's yeah. not just the size of the boat correlating to the, size of the person it's like i mean that's it's that is harsh. part of it but <laughs> we figured out with the valkyrie that you need you need to have i mean and it's very obvious you need to have your heels below your hips and so that sit height matters and so you know that sit height also matters in terms of like well if you're sitting very high up in the boat it's easier for the your center of gravity is higher up. Therefore, the boat can get on edge or flip over much easier than if you had dropped your center of gravity and sat much lower on the boat. And so we try, the, the seat is there for comfort, but it is also there to allow you to have the correct sit height that works for your paddle. Oh, style. okay. That's why. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, like Jeff and I are like the same size pe person. And he paddles it with no seat inflation, and I paddle it with full seat inflation because we both handle the boats a little differently. Right. Hmm. And the Valkyrie was the same way. You so. know, I know. So I never tried the Valkyrie mostly because I was afraid of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> because I'm, yeah, I, I think I would not be now. But can you talk a little bit about the difference between the Valkyrie and the Mage? Just for because yeah, sure. I, I am getting a lot of questions. So. I mean, the major difference, well, there's two major differences. One is tube diameter. The other is the stern shape. And with the Valkyrie, we have made a more advanced floor. You know, so a, we call it a shaped floor. You know, the floor is made of, the outer floor is made of multiple pieces of fabric that we stitch and tape together and make waterproof. Whereas the Mage, 
we use a f like a flat floor where the pad sits in the boat and the the pad oh, pushes the floor down. Okay. So we're creating a similar type of secondary stability, but we've made it much easier to manufacture on the mage and it it doesn't perform as well as it does for the Valkyrie. Okay. But I mean for me it's like amazing. And so uh, this is something else that comes up for me and I have a hard time with it because I'm like I think that the mage is way more stable than the Wolverine personally. But people, I keep hearing other people say that's not, but I'm just like, but it feels like it, but it's, I know it's because I know how to, to edge, but won't. Well, that's the difference. The, it's a primary versus secondary stability. So with a flat floor pack raft, like a classic or an expedition or a Wolverine, you sit in the boat, the boat is very stable just on flat water. You just sit in it. It does not want to rock side to side at all. It's very stable in a primary uh, position. We call secondary stability is when you start to lean to one side and get on the edge of the boat. And so in a Wolverine a classic expedition, the only thing you have on the outside of the boat is a round tube. And so when you lean to one side, you're on a round object. And so the boat does not have a position where it feels stable. And so it requires a lot of, um, you know, uh, I don't know, expertise, you know, a lot of getting out and practicing mm -hmm. to get to be able to hold that boat on an edge without flipping over. Okay, so it is, all right. So I just apparently have become a decent butter because it does feel more stable to me. Well, and so the mage is intentionally more stable in a secondary stability position. Mm -hmm. Than a Valkyrie, for example. Or just in general. I mean, it's more stable than a Valkyrie because it's got bigger tubes. Ah, okay. Um, and so you have a wider, a wider boat. And so um, with the bigger tubes, it's hard to get over the tube to flip, you know, when you're flipping over. It's harder to get around that that tube that's on the outside of your hip where you know the valkyrie is smaller so it's easier to do that but it also when well, the valkyrie that increases your ability to get on edge and stay on edge and carve in and out of features of the river mm -hmm. so it makes the boat more playful and engaging and if you're a good boater then you know or have a lot of practice or want to grow into the capabilities of like a valkyrie then you know you just it allows you to do things that like the mage can't quite do. But the mage is like such a perfect sweet spot for someone like me mm -hmm. who has no class five aspirations, barely class four aspirations. Yeah. And so, you know, what I would recommend for most people, you know, especially if you're a beginner, very beginner, just want to run some white water, um, you know, a flat floor boat, like a Valkyrie or like a narwhal or an expedition are are great boats for that but if you if you want to run whitewater and you're thinking that you're going to run a, run a lot of whitewater and get good at it then the mage is a, a fantastic boat because it allows you to get on that secondary stability much easier without flipping over and you can carve through features of the river as you're going downstream and so it, it's a great boat that people can grow into and it's it's very it might feel unstable you know, so that's what I'm guessing is that people are saying, hey, it's not that stable. It's because it's not very stable in a primary um, primary position. When you just hop in the boat, the boat yeah. does want to edge side to side. If you lean just a little to your left, the boat's going to edge to your left. Lean to the right, a little bit to the right. But when it gets to that stable secondary position, it does not want to keep going. And so that makes it more stable and more friendly in whitewater environments. That's awesome. I'm going to, so I did like a little video to, cause I literally had so many people ask me, why do you want the mage? So I just made a video, but I'm not like technically inclined and I don't know all the details of the boat. So I was like, I don't know how this works, but I get on two edges and to me it feels more stable, but now I'm going to be able to say, okay, yeah. listen to this. And, and yeah. We know. And that's kind of funny because we came, I put together a product video for the mage that'll be on the website you yeah. know, on the product and it's like, but it talks about like what the boat is, not why you necessarily want the boat over something else. Ah, well, you know, I, cause it's like, Oh, the boat has a drop floor. It has this foot pillow attachment. It has four point thigh straps. It has this type of, of stern and bow and these types of self bailing holes. It's like, what is the product versus like this conversation? It's like, well, you want this, boat over a narwhal if you're trying to increase skill and get down stream with more engaging what i would call fun some people might not feel that way but that's how i feel well and this yeah. is this is like what i think about because i we're 
because we are always constantly having people ask what types of boats they should be in. And I base what I tell people on what I know about them and what they tell me. Like, I had, you know, I have a, a husband wife that the husband's like, I really want to do class three. And my wife, she's probably going to do class one in lakes. And, uh, and I'm, and so I'm going to do this, I'm going to get this boat and then, and we'll share it. And I'm like, well, I, like eventually that's a great boat to start in, but probably you're going to want the mage because you're like me. And like, we, and that's pretty much like every single, pretty much every single client I have, they're like, well, what should I use? Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. I mean like the Valkyrie is not great for, for heavy loads. So it's not like a great Grand Canyon boat or a long multi-day trip boat. Um, but the mage is. May just got more volume, but then, you know, the Valkyrie is a better boat for like creaking. Yeah. You know, you're not, you, you have 20 pounds on the boat. It's very easy to maneuver. You know, I mean the, the mage will do fine, but the Valkyrie is a better craft for that. Yeah. If that's where your skill level is. Right. 